up to spring break, and we said Monday is too early because we just came back from spring break. Could you extend it a little bit? So I agree. Okay, extend to Wednesday. How about it? How about that? So homework four will be due on Wednesday after spring break. The first of Wednesday. The first of Wednesday after spring break. Okay, so you have two more days to work on your homework four. And homework four is super easy. I assure you, no essays. Just a hand calculation. And even the hand calculation is very straightforward. Just use the equation I give you. No tricky things. So you will, I will post the homework for maybe next Monday. So you have more than three weeks, including spring break, of course, OK? You have more than 10 days to work on homework four. And also homework three and homework four will be covered in exam two. So if you look at syllabus, after this two homework, you have exam two. Okay? This is my plan. And also, when we finish exam two, I'm going to release final project topic. And you can start your final project. You will need one month working on final project. The final project will be pretty similar to what you have done in this problem eight in homework three. But I will change the shape. Right now, you have a rectangular shape for the cross section, right? I will change the shape to an elliptical, some irregular shape, and give you some trouble, right? That is why you need one month. So this is the plan for the whole semester. If you are not clear about my plan, you can read my syllabus. I try my best to stick to my syllabus. If I didn't stick to my syllabus, I only give you extension, okay? All of the things are pushing forward, backwards, not forward. Okay. So we're going to learn something about super composites. I know some students are taking courses. Another professor, Pastorus, he is teaching composites in this department. Some students are taking that course. So if you are taking that course, this topic is pretty easy for you because very similar. Just maybe notation is different. All of the uh, all of the calculation is very similar. In the first definition, we need to know what is composites. Composites is a combination of the uh, high-stress high element and in a matrix. This kind of element could be carbon fiber. And this kind of element is embedded in a matrix. This matrix can be can be epoxy or polyester. So that means Composites, the definition composites, the combination of two materials. One material is high strength, stiff, and the other one is soft. Modulus is not that high, and we embed this kind of high stiffness, high strength material into that matrix. Two combination. And more complicated composites will involve maybe three different materials, four different materials. This is so-called definition of composites. And why do we need composites in aerospace engineering? So you must have some advantage. The first one is a uh, savings in weight. If you use metallic materials, copper, iron, steel, or airplane, it's too heavy. Right? Sometimes you need some light materials to save in weight. So savings in weight. Because the density of filament and the matrix is really very low, especially in this kind of matrix. Epoxy or polyester is polymer, so it's very light. But that is not strong enough. That is why you need filament. Filament is strong. So you combine one soft material with one stiff material. And to save in weight, but still retain the strength of the whole system. So the second, the second the second advantage will be because you are trying to use that stiff material to resist the loading. Right? So you can design the direction of this filament. If the loading is on this direction, 
my filament will be along this direction. So with this, the major loading. If my loading is along that direction, I will tune the direction of my filament to resist my major loading. So the advantage of composites, you can tune the direction of filament to resist the major loading acting on the structure. <laughs> right? So that means the direction of the filament can be aligned. Be aligned with the major loading direction. So this is two advantage. And how we are going to do the stress analysis? If we are going to use components, so actually, why do we care about stress? Why do we do so many structure analysis in the previous lectures? Because after the structure analysis, you figure out what is the stress distribution in the structure. And then after that, you need to choose material, right? For example, you have a wing, and here you have a stress concentration. There you have a major loading. And in that part, you need some special materials. That is why you need composites, because some stress concentration need to be taken care of. You need composites to resist that loading. So how to do the stress analysis for composites? We have two approach. Stress analysis and composites. The first one is so called micromechanics. The definition of micromechanics is the fiber or filament and matrix are treated, are considered separately. The second approach is so called macro mechanics. I even asked several students how to pronounce these two words. So close, it's very diff so close. It's micromechanics and macromechanics. So I tried to differentiate, okay? And he told me that when they are in high school, they learn something about microeconomics. Microeconomics. I don't know what is the concept of that kind of thing. Economics, you still have microeconomics micro and macroeconomics. Corresponding to that, the same thing. This one is. You can imagine this one larger, a larger scale. This okay. one is small scale. So in this macro mechanics, fiber and matrix are considered together. Okay. Different approach. You will have different equations to use. We, the fiber and the matrix are considered separately, what's going to happen? So the first approach you want to learn is micromechanics. We take a one simple example. Matrix, element, matrix. And we define a coordinates, x direction, y direction. And also corresponding to the direction of the filament and the matrix, you can have a so-called longitudinal direction and the transverse direction. L stands for longitudinal. T stands for transverse. Okay? And if the loading is applied on a structure like this, sigma L, this is a 
stress applied on the composites along the longitudinal direction. Okay, and we define several quantities. So the first quantity is E L. E L is a modulus along the longitudinal direction, longitudinal modulus. Because if we have composites, the elastic constant along this direction, along this direction will be different. So you need to have different notation for that. E L will be the modulus of the composites. Longitudinal direction. And then we we'll look at the approach that we are trying to study micromechanics. That means we need to study filament and matrix separately. So we need to define quantity for filament and matrix separately. So we need to define the modulus of this filament. So this is modulus of the filament. Some textbook call this fiber, fiber matrix, filament matrix, they're the same thing. Okay, EF, modulus of the filament. EM will be modulus of the matrix. So this is three basic quantities. And then we're going to derive what is the relation between this EL, EF, and EM. They shouldn't be independent, right? You combine these two and you get that. They shouldn't be independent. You combine these two different materials and get a new material with a new modulus. But they should, that EL should be dependent on EF and EM, right? You have a, there should be a relation. Then what is the relation? So we deal with uh, stress first. If you apply your sigma L along this direction, the composites will be elongated. This is the original length. And the elongation will be delta L along that direction. And then what is the strain? You define a strain along that direction. E epsilon L will be delta L L, right? This is a strain of this composites along the longitudinal direction. Change of length divided by the original length of this material body. You get a strain. And then when you have strain, you can use Hooke's law to define what is stress. Sigma L is the stress along the longitudinal direction. According to the Hooke's law, should be Young's modulus times the strain. Right? So this is a stress acting on the whole composites. And then what is the stress acting on the filament? Because that material body is deformed together. Filament and the matrix are elongated together. So filament and the matrix and the whole material matrix will have the same strength, right? What of the strength, the components will be epsilon L. That means EF times epsilon L, right? The stress acting on the filament, E will be the modulus of that filament times its strain. The strain is the same as the whole composites because they are elongated together. So this is the stress acting on the filament. And same thing, the stress acting on the matrix will be EM times epsilon L, because stress equals to modulus times strength. Modulus of matrix will be EM, but strength is the same. Everywhere is epsilon L, because they are deformed together. So now you have stress acting on the whole composites. You have stress acting on the filaments. You have the stress acting on the matrix. Then what is the relation between them? So we need to think about this as a force, when you apply a stress acting on these materials, stress is sigma, sigma L. This is a materials, right? 
And now you have sigma L. Sigma L. This is a normal stress. This is a longitudinal stress acting on the composites. Then what is the force on the cross section? What is the force acting on the cross section? Stress times area. So the total force acting on the composites will be sigma L times A. A is the area of this cross section. The force equals to stress times the area. This is the total force acting on the composites. This total force should be a summation of the force acting on the filaments and the force acting on the matrix. Right? So then, what is the force acting on the filament? Sigma F times A or something else. The force acting on the filament, this is filament. The stress is at here. Times area should be his area, should be the area of the filament. So we need AF here. Let's put AF here. This is the force acting on the filament. And then what is the force acting on the matrix? We know what is stress, and the area should be AM. AF, AM stands for the area cross section, area of the cross section of filaments and matrix. And this should be equal, right? The total force should be equal to the summation of the force acting on the filaments and the force acting on the matrix. And then you have an equation, sigma L times A equals to sigma F times AF plus sigma M A M. And then we have equation for sigma L. Sigma L is sigma L is E L E sigma L. This equation, right? Sigma L is that here. So we replace sigma L, sigma F, and sigma M in this equation. It will be E L times E sigma L times A equals to E F times E sigma L times A F plus E M E sigma L A M. I just replace all of the stress terms with uh, modulus and the strength. You can see every term has the e epsilon L, here, here, here. It's not zero, so you can take it away. The elongation along the longitudinal direction. So you will get E L times A equals to E F times A F plus E M A M. This is an equation. We can further simplify it because our goal is to figure out what is the relation between these three modulus. We need to further simplify this equation. E L equals to E F times A F divided by A plus E M A M divided by A. Okay. If you are taking that course about composites, you are very familiar with this equation already. But many students may not be taking that course. So this is the final equation we have. The relation between the modulus of the composites and the relation uh, and the modulus of the fil uh, filaments and, and the matrix. So we define this as V F. Define this as V M. What is the physical meaning of VF, VM? It's a volume fraction of the filament. VF is a volume fraction of the filament. Why it is a volume fraction? When you look at the structure, this is AF. This is A. They have the same lengths, right? So, Volume fraction stands for AF area times the length divided by A times the length. The total volume will be the cross section times the length. And the volume of the filament will be the area of the filament times the length. And this area this area is the same. We will cancel with each other. So this is the volume fraction of the filament. 
because you are trying to combine two composite two materials in a composite. You must have a percentage. How much is filament, how much is matrix. So this is called volume fraction. And then we have that notation. This is the equation you have, you can use in your homework and exam. Not only this one, I'm going to introduce what about this equation. So this is a relation between the longitude in the modulus and the modulus of the filaments and the matrix. You want to calculate, I'm going to, for example, I'm going to give you what is the uh, material I'm going to use for the fiber, what is the material I'm going to use for the matrix, and how much is the matrix, how much is the percentage of the filament, and how much for the percentage of the matrix. I'm going to ask you what is the uh, total modulus of these components, because you have the combination, you have the volume fracking, just use this equation. Okay? But we need more equations to calculate more quantities. So this is just the fourth equation, the relation between the longitudinal modulus and the modulus of the filament and matrix. Second equation I'm going to introduce is another one. So again, we look at this components. This is filament matrix. As I said, because you are trying to combine one stiff material with another soft material. So the modulus along this direction will be different from the modulus in this direction now. If it's one material, everywhere is E. Young, a Hooke's law, Young's modulus, everywhere, isotropic, so-called. Now it's not isotropic. The definition of isotropic means every direction you have the same modulus. But for composites, it's unisotropic. That means modulus along this direction will be different from the modulus along this direction. Why? Because this thickness, along this direction, you have much thicker soft material. Right? Along this direction, they are, have the same lens. I'm going to calculate what is the modulus on this direction. You will see from the equation, you will see it's different. Okay. What is the modulus along this transverse direction? This is L, this is T. This is X, this is Y. So what is ET? And what I calculated in the previous pages, EL. So what is ET? What is the definition of modulus? Modulus is the ratio between the stress strength, right? Basically, if you, divide, if you divide your stress by your strength, you will get a modulus. If you want to calculate what is the modulus along some direction, you need to figure out what is the stress along that direction. What is the strength along that direction? And then divide that stress by that strength. You can, get, you can get what is the modulus along that direction. So if we want to calculate what is the modulus along this transverse direction, we need to apply a stress along transverse direction and then figure out what is the strength along that direction. And then divide that stress by the strength to figure out the modulus along that direction. So the loading will be like this. Sigma t, sigma t. Different from the previous derivation, right? Because from the previous derivation, we're trying to figure out the modulus along this direction. So we apply a sigma l along this direction. And now we're trying to figure out the modulus on this direction. So then we need to define several quantities. Et is the strain is the transverse strain of the composites. along that transverse direction, transverse strain of the whole composites. And epsilon F is the transverse strain of the filament. Another quantity is EM. It's the transverse strain the matrix 
when I'm talking about transfer strain, transfer strain is means strain along this direction. Okay. So it's different from E L. In the previous duration, we use some E epsilon L. This is not E. Epsilon T, epsilon F, and epsilon M. And then we have these quantities, and then the first the first equation we can have is what is the elongation along the transverse direction. You have defined strength. You know the length along this direction you define as Lt. Okay, the height of the composite is Lt, and this one is Lm divided by two. This one is Lm divided by two. This one is Lf. So I define the height of the filament and also the matrix. The total height of the composite along the transverse direction is Lt, and the height of the matrix will be Lm. But it, it is divided into two parts. So there's Lm divided by 2 on the top and one Lm divided by 2 on, in the bottom. And Lf is the uh, height of the filaments along the transverse direction. And then what is the elongation along the transverse direction? You have the strain along that direction. You have the height. So this is the elongation. Why it is this equation? Because strain is defined as change of length divided by the original length. I just move the original length to the right. So this is the elongation of the whole component along transverse direction. E epsilon t times Lt. Epsilon t is the strain, transverse strain of the components. And then what is the elongation of the filaments? Epsilon f times LF. Same pattern, right? You have the strain, you have the height. And delta M, epsilon M times LM. This is the elongation of the components and also elongation of the filaments and matrix along the transverse direction. Again, we have an equation to use because the total elongation along this direction should be a combination of the elongation of the filaments and the matrix. So delta T should be a summation of delta F, delta M. You have two different materials. Each of them has been elongated that much, that much. Put them together, you get total elongation. And then I am going to use that equation, epsilon T, LT, equals to epsilon F, LF, plus epsilon M, times M. This is a strength. This is the height of the composites. This is the height of the filaments. And then we are going to, because the quantity we are trying to figure out is the relationship between the modulus. So that means we need to get rid of the strength. Right? Strain is uh, stress divided by the modulus. Strain divided by modulus. Strain, uh, stress divided by modulus. Stress divided by modulus. So this one will be sigma t times E t, right? The strain along the transverse direction of all components should be equal to the stress acting on that component divided by the modulus of the components along that direction, L t. And this one, epsilon f, is sigma t divided by E f. Along this direction, everywhere have the same stress. So the stress acting on the, I mean the stress acting on the filaments, matrix, and the whole composites, all of them, same quantity, sigma t, because because your loading, your loading is like this. This is your sigma t. This is your sigma t, right? <laughs> Sigma t everywhere should be the same, right? Because this is uniform distributed. If you cut, take the force balance everywhere should have the should have, should be having the same sigma t. So sigma t divided by E f, you will get the strain of that filament. L f plus sigma t E m. This is the equation we have. 
and sigma t is the same. We can cancel sigma t on both sides. You will get lt et equals to lf ef plus lm em. And then we simplify this. If we simplify this, we will get et. I'm going to divide lt by both sides. I'm going to divide this term on both sides. So this one will be gone. And that one will be lf divided by lt ef plus lm lt divided by ef. So what is lf divided by lt? This is LF. This is LT. Okay. The height of the filament.